check it. When you're dealing with a narc, whenever you ever, 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 or whenever you decide to get in another relationship, if you're healing and you're going through the process from detaching your emotions from the narcissistic person's soul, because it's a, it's a dangerous soul tie, basically. They are empty. You are full of empathy and it feeds their emptiness because inside they're seared. They're, you know, they're numb. And I can speak from a place because I once was that way, but I didn't do what narcissistic scorn kids did. These are adult scorn kids, not, you know, little kids. These are adult, adult scorn kids, meaning that they play more vicious and more dangerous than an uh, average child would. Like we all were real children at one point in time, but spiritually, when you are abused by, you know, narcissistic parents or um, toxic family members or, you know, um, toxic relationships, workshops, it don't matter because abuse is abuse, words or physical or spiritual because spiritually we've been abused by being lied to for a very long period of time so um and having a lot of things left and you know we wouldn't told a lot of things that we know now so like when you're dealing with a narcissistic person and to notice if that person is narcissistic you have to do a lot of testing. And I mean a lot of testing in the beginning. Not a lot of testing in the end. A lot of testing in the beginning. They're going to tell you a whole lot of this. As y'all call it, um, excuse me, y'all got something in my eye. Please work with me. Okay, I think I'm good. Um... Um, when a narcissistic person approach you and they're very happy, they're very touchy. Excuse me, y'all. I'm sorry. I feel like a hair in my eye. I know if y'all ever had a hair in your eye, it feel like it's the worst thing going on in your life. But um, when they come into your life, you need to check them immediately, like start your alert soon as possible because first of all check the state the state of vulnerability you're in that's when you need to understand that's when it's time not to even engage indulge in nothing with the opposite sex or going running out there to a homegirl because you know a lot of homegirls and homeboys and i say homegirls and homeboys because they're adult scorn kids that play vicious they hook their friends up with people sometimes that one person have been through almost a whole squad you get what i'm saying so narcissistic people they hold a lot of secrets they cut throats to each other They've two-faced it to each other. And I mean their friends, their families, they, they tell you that that's their ace boom coon. Soon their ace boom coon do not do what they want them to do. They're going to find somebody that they can go to and talk to them about. That's how narcissistic people are. When they first approach you, if they're talking about a lot of their um, achievements, if they um talking about what their ex didn't do, if they talk about how people done use them and abuse them, and, or if they come to you and tell you people done um got over on them all their life, and uh, be easy, be easy. Check your vulnerability stage. It's not the narc fault. Because the narc see the vulnerability. It's like they can smell it. It's a certain scent. 
vulnerability got because you move funny. Vulnerability got a sweet smell and vulnerability can have a sour smell. Because your vulnerability can be aching so bad, it's infected so bad, you just don't mind who comforts you. You just don't mind who lay it down. You just don't mind who take that ease away, that drive of pain and that urge of that sexual tension that's built up inside of you. So, narcs really can tell if you're, you know, where it's at. Like, does she want to, or do he want to? You know, men got their way of approaching a woman and women got their way of approaching a man. Scorn adult kids move sexually. They move financially. They move materialistically. They move in, you know, in their body shapes and their appearance. They move in that form. So if you're talking that way or they're immediately talking that way, they love to take you to dinner they love to wine and dine you for a short period of time. It don't last long. You, you're not going to get um, too much. They, that's why they throw it on you all at once. I used to watch my uncles do it to women. I mean, tons of women. Then a certain uncle will watch the other uncle bring in the women. And then no longer than two months, three months later... The brother bringing in his baby brother's girlfriends. And I'm like, I wonder how this dude feeling. They are very disrespectful to each other. Believe me, brothers go against brothers. It's like Cain and Abel on each other. When it comes into a narcissistic, dysfunctional family, it gets real ugly. Sisters against each other. They can't stand each other. Parents against... When evil and dysfunctional... Toxic traits, and I don't care what your color. You can be brass like us, or you can be off-white like, you know, the other colors, or you can be off-color like everybody else. But guess what? They go through it all. I done been through all these cultures, almost. They are human. They are a creation of God. I don't know why y'all thinking these people ain't going. Uh, where do you think all this information come from, Nark? Nart mean uh, you go to um, drug classes and stuff. They would they say narcotics. That means some perks and all that. Toxic. So they they comparing physical things to behaviors of spiritual. So they don't. They're not gonna say a demon. Of course not. They don't want to hear that. A lot of people don't even want to hear the word demon. I don't want to hear that. What we talking about? You talking about a narcissistic person? A lot of people is in denial on the spiritual world. That's why they just need information. Some of them therapists probably just love to absorb information to keep them smart and keep them alive. Y'all got to understand the plan and the game of evil. But it is good to go talk to therapy though because it's an outlet and it's somebody you don't know. Because a lot of people, when you know people, they're not going to really tell you the truth. They're, a lot of people sugarcoat how they really feel inside. So it is to go talk to therapy. But I suggest you get a life coach. I say this all the time. I don't do spiritual leaders. I don't do the church. And I'm not going to ever do the church. Not just old church. Now, when the new churches start coming up and being in certain orders, Christ, man, woman, child, I'll go. But if it's on anything else and everybody in there dressed like hoes and, and pimps, no, put some robes on everybody. If y'all can um, pay a little money to get a business deal and, and, and have uniforms for your business, the church can buy robes like the choir have to um, put on where nobody can see nobody's body. Because ain't nobody should be seeing nobody's figures and shapes and sizes in no church. Temptation all over the place. And my husband wouldn't be allowed in there. Because the whole church would be flipped upside down. They would really think Satan is really in the building. Because it's a certain way you carry yourself as a person. Once you learn the true way and become what you're supposed to become, the better version of yourself. Not staying the same old version of yourself and having all the heavy weight on you, all those old suppressed feelings, which I would have never carried around anyways. That's why I was hated from a very young age. And guess what? I'm hated now at a older age and guess what i'm gonna be hated all my life but guess what i got to be the truth teller and so do you see ya